Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, brothers and sisters. The Lord has graciously brought us to a new day. And we must give thanks unto Him. And before we commence our work this day, it will be important that we have a fellowship with Him, to hear from Him, to feed our soul with the bread of life, that will be strengthened to carry out His work that He has given unto us. Of course, and His word corrects, this word builds. So we trust that as we hear this morning, the Lord will correct us. The Lord will build us in the name of Jesus Christ. Our test this morning is Joel chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, and from verse 9 to 17. Let us pray. Gracious Father, your word is light. Let it give us direction. Your word is life. Let it impart us with your life. Your word is bread. Let it feed us with, your word, with, with the bread of life so that we'll be strong and be able to represent you to do what you want us to do with our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The theme for our devotion this morning is part-time and full-time and it's taken from Jewel chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, 9, 17. We are using the Church of Nigeria daily fountain. Let's read. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations, and I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourself and come, all ye hidden, and gather yourself together round about. They that cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the hidden be weakened, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the hidden round about. Put ye the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get ye done, for the press is full, the vast overflow, for the wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes, in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. 17. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. Like we said, the theme is part-time and full-time. And we are aware that uh, there are people who have two jobs, one full-time and the other part-time. We have had, we know, about heard of past, uh, lecturers who are doing part-time job in some other university or other institutions. So there are other, in other fields, they have, some people have up to two, three jobs. 
so what is our teacher or the devotional writer is telling us this morning is that as we believers, we have two, two, two types of job. We have two engagements. One is full-time job and the other one is part-time. We will come to know what our part-time and our full-time job is. But drawing from the reading that we had this morning, uh, God talking about the deliverance of Judah, Jerusalem, the southern kingdom that were now in it, were now in captivity, and God was talking about their deliverance, and that also the children of Israel will have a role to play in their own deliverance. Although God is bringing the deliverance, but they themselves have a, a role, and that is why He says, "Beat," in verse ten or so. Verse 10 said, Beat your plowshares into sword and your sprony hooks into spear. Let the weak say, I am strong. So, and when you are talking about, you know, the scripture, especially the Old Testament, is a shadow of the new. So, we're talking about the deliverance of, 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 of the people of God, in uh, the, uh, referring to the, the Jews themselves, but it speaks much more than that. To the deliverance of all my kind, all my kind, and of course, those who are already be saved have a role to play, and that's what is speaking about. That is what being referred to in verse ten when he said, "Beat your plowshares into sword." Plow, plowshares, and uh, prony hooks. They speak of agricultural materials which the farmers engage in in their in farming uh, business. And where they make their daily living. So he's speaking, he's telling us that even our daily, uh, our place where we make our daily living, our uh, bread, make our, receive our monthly income and our annual income, our businesses, uh, whether you are a politician, whether you, are a, you work in the hospital, whether you are a lecturer, whether you are a businesswoman who, who is a trader, that that trade is a place you turn it to the place of war. Why war? We're referring to salvation of souls because that is actually deliverance of souls from the kingdom of darkness. Now, the whole world, after the fall of man, uh, the whole world has become captives of the devil. And so God sending his son Jesus Christ to save the world, to save the world, to deliver the world from captivity, he has handed over that same assignment to us who have been saved already, who have received Jesus Christ, who are saved, to go and proclaim the gospel to others who have not received Christ so that they can be saved and be brought into the kingdom. And that was why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for the salvation of all souls, whether to the Jews or to the Gentiles. It is the power of God for, unto salvation. So the gospel is the is is given to us believer and as our power as our full-time job so, so that is where our full-time job comes from for the salvation of soul and you know the value of a soul is when when jesus talking about the value of a soul he said the whole world put together is not equal to a soul because for he said what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and loses his soul so when you are standing with a soul that is not saved, you are standing with something precious in the hand of God that you got to engage yourself to proclaim the gospel for the salvation of that person. You got to say something for the salvation of that person. And of course, the Jesus Christ also said that for one soul, for one soul that turned to the Lord, there is great joy in heaven that gladdens the heart of God. Angels rejoice over one soul. The saints, are, saints that have gone ahead of us rejoice over one soul. So you are engaged in an assignment, in a business, in a job that will make heaven to, be, to rejoice, to be rejoicing. So if you win a soul, you turn a soul to the Lord, heaven will be rejoicing. So that the reward knows no ban. Just like you talk about the reward of, uh, 
your monthly income or your, from your business place that makes you to wake up very early in the morning, wake up, you're a worker in oil, 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 oil industry, you wake up before, early before you, you bath and get to the office before time, you don't go there late because you know what you're getting from there, you don't want to lose your job, so you're giving all your diligence. So the same thing, that we should give more diligence, we give more attention, give more, give priority to the winning of so, to, to bring in the gospel to the people that we come across. And so, and you can see it from our, our daily devotional, the story that was told in that place. The teacher was careful to bring this story, and it's very interesting. A teenager playing with uh, his mates, his friends, and after they have had a good time playing and enjoying, it was a time for the, his, his mates, his friends, to uh, fellowship with God, pray and dance and rejoicing. But he said because he belonged to another feet, he sat alone watching them. And the teacher took advantage and just preaching a word. Do you enjoy fellowship with God in your faith like this one? Like your friends? He said no. And that was all. The following morning, the teenager came banging their door and say, telling them that they want to, you want to enjoy God. So he decided to receive Christ. Just for saying, do you enjoy? Just a question. So what does it mean? Just, so that's what, if you go to verse 10, or verse 12, it said, let the hidden be wakened. So all our own is just to waken the, hid, the hidden. Those who are not saved, their consciousness to the light of the gospel. Their consciousness, when you proclaim the gospel, you waken their consciousness to the need of salvation, to the need of the solution that God has provided to the world. When you proclaim the gospel, you, wake their, you open their eyes to see that God has made a provision for their salvation, made a provision for their deliverance. Now, that is your whole portion. But then you see that verse says, says, For there will I sit to judge all the hidden round about. You see? So, what, that, what is that place saying is that your own, our own, is to proclaim the gospel. Their conversion belongs to God. He will take that responsibility. And that's what Jesus Christ said in John chapter 16. He says, it is expedient that I go. If I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. When the Holy Spirit comes, it will convert. It will convert their soul or convert them of sin. And so they will they need for repentance. We come by the Holy Spirit. So when you proclaim the gospel, the Holy Spirit take the word you say and sit in their heart and convert them and convert them. And then they will turn unto Him. It is a power of God unto salvation. It is the Holy Spirit. Your word has power when it is spoken by the Holy Spirit. When it is led by the Spirit of God. You are led of the Spirit of God to say a word, the word will work because the Holy Spirit will take it and sit upon them and begin to will bring about salvation. It is not you that convert. You have a business of proclaiming, of speaking for the Lord, of directing, giving them the light. Open their eyes that, hey, friend, God has made a provision for all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that, that whosoever believe in him will not perish. The world is perishing. People are perishing. They are dying and going to a hellfire. They are going to die. If we hear already, they are still suffering. They think that it's all about the money they are making and the rest of them. No. No. The man is, a, is a, an eternal soul. Anyone that leaves this world with, without Christ is separated forever and is going to be with, without God forever in hell, which is not prepared for them, it's prepared for the, for the enemy, the devil, who rebel against God. It was not prepared for mankind. And so he has you have been born again, you have been saved. And so he left you. Do you know why he left us? Because the day you got born again, if you had died, you go to heaven. So why did he leave you behind? He left you behind because of this full-time job of saving souls, of, pro of proclaiming the gospel, bringing the work of salvation to others. It is when they hear, he said, how can they, how can they uh, 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 hear without a preacher? How can they be saved if they don't hear? So it is, we are to proclaim, make them to hear 
the solution that God has provided for the world. Let me bring another point also from what we have read. It says, it said, multitude, multitude are in the valley of decision. Multitude, everywhere, wherever you turn, is it in the music industry, multitude and save. Is it in the entertainment industry, multitude and save. In football, in splint, multitude are unsaved. So if you're a believer in the in this in these places, in these various mountains, as it were, if you have opportunity to bring the gospel to someone. Are you a politician? You are a governor, you are a commissioner, you are a minister, whatever position you occupy, or you work as a civil servant, or you are as a civil servant, as a director, even as a cleaner. That position you are is a place where you can bring the gospel to somebody. Don't waste your opportunity. Don't waste your opportunity. It's our full-time job. Now, sometimes when we look at we look at pastors, bishop, uh, and priests are the ones that are full-time job. No, all of us, all believers, are full-time job. Pastors are only to build you up so that you can do your full-time job effectively. So we are all. In a full time job, and that the full time job is the salvation, is the preaching of the gospel. And this preaching of the gospel, and like I said, why he talked about beating them to war is that when you preach the gospel, you are trying to snatch somebody from the hand of the captor, from the one, the hand of an oppressor, from the one who held him in captivity. Do you think that the person will be happy and will ordinarily let it go? No, that is why. He says, beat, it to, beat your plowshare to spear, to spear, and to uh, 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 your prony hook to, to, to spear and sword. The reason is that, that we need to engage the sword of the spirit. The weapons of our warfare, they are not kind of but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And of course, if that is the case, then what are the, what are the weapons of our warfare? Prayer is a one of the weapons. Fasting is one of the weapons. Study meditating is one of the weapons. You must give yourself to this because as for the, the God, the Bible says, the God of this world has blinded the mind of the people. So ordinarily they will not be saved on, without, without a power of God. So you need to really take time to seek God intercede for those people so that when you present the gospel, the word will, you, you say, we carry enough grace, we carry enough fire, we carry enough force that can break the power of the enemy and penetrate it to the heart and settle that in the heart of the people for their salvation. That is why it's a warfare. So we must engage. And of course, you remember Jesus, how he engaged himself in fasting, praying for 40 days, 40 nights. In the culture of praying and fasting has, has been left, has been almost abandoned because the fasting we do these days is only, oh, I have no child, I have no job, I have no job. We don't fast to pray for the salvation of people. We don't pray, fast to pray that God will come down and reach on to the hearts of the people. We don't fast and pray and break the yokes of the enemy. Remove the veil that cover them, the darkness that cover the people. So, beloved, uh, this morning, we are reminded that the reason, the purpose for which God left you and I to be alive is not because of that job. It's not because of that position you occupy. He left you because in that position, you can reach up. You can represent God. You can be a savior. In the Bible says, out of Zion, saviors shall rise. So from the church, we are saviors to the world. So savior to salvation of souls is our main job. It's our main job. So we must engage in and give it time. Give our time to it. Don't. Don't neglect it. We give, it's unfortunate that we are, our eyes are blind and we give more time, much all our time on the business of that where we make our money, daily bread, office and here and there. We can go all the length, but we can go all the length. We can make a sacrifice for anything to get our daily income, to get our monthly income, to get our business going. But for the salvation or so, we are not ready to make. We have not made any much effort. And of course, know that we have the other feet. They are employing every method to drag people into their feet. 
Now, but that is not even the major. The fact is that the devil is engaged in drawing people into hell using every method. You can, you know, they are not. You see, guests are not ashamed. They go nude, even dancing, and all everywhere. All is propagating the kingdom of darkness, and is hardening the people. And today you have Yahoo boys everywhere. The devil is getting them into his kingdom. We have been given this assignment to save our youth, to save our friends, to bring the gospel to them. Don't say they will not listen. Just say it. Pray about it. Ask God for salvation. Just as you ask for God to give you a job, ask God for, for your children, ask God for this one. Ask for the salvation of the people. Ask God every, every month. Ask God to give you a soul for him. If every one of us in the house, in the church, ask God for salvation of soul, a one soul, even in every month, I'm sure in no time the whole world will be turned unto the Lord. The Bible says, if you ask the hidden of me, I will give them unto you. So there's no one he cannot give unto us. So let's take it up, take them up in prayers. There are many people, we criticize the people a lot. We criticize all those, who are, those um, worldly musicians. We talk bad about them. We talk about those who dance naked. But how many times have you engaged them in prayer? Call their name. Say, oh God, a counter so person. A counter so person. A counter so person. Lord, turn them to you. Let the light of the gospel shine upon them. And you send the message to them if you have your phone, if you have the other. And then perhaps those who are contacted, who are close to them, can just pass the word of God across to them. Who knows? The law we pick, we take, we take it up. Our own is to proclaim the gospel. Let's know that we have a, a full-time job which we don't close from. We don't close from it. Whether in the evening, whether in the night, whether in the morning, whether in the afternoon, wherever you go, whether on a journey, whether in a class, whether as a teacher, whether as a businessman, you have a full-time. You are on full-time. So as a nurse, it's a full-time. Stay your patients, which you attend to, as you administer drugs to them, you can ship, ship in the gospel there. As a teacher who takes take the children in school, teaches them, you can ship the gospel. As a lecturer, you can ship in the gospel. As a politician, you can ship in the gospel. That is what the Lord is saying. Let's all get ourselves engaged in this assignment. It is all our assignment. It is not meant for the pastors alone. It is not meant for the bishops or the priests alone. It is for all of us. So this morning, I challenge every one of us, whether you are a child, I know of a child, or a young man who was called at the age of six. So even as children can communicate the gospel, don't say they are children. Me, pro proclaim the gospel to them. Tell them that they can share the gospel. So my friend, you can share your, the gospel. Jesus loves you. He wants you to be saved. He don't want you to go to, to be destroyed. So tell, trust in him and God will do so. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Thank you for your word that has come to us. May this word brood upon them and let them walk in us to wake up the consciousness of our full-time assignment that while we are still here on earth is to bring the salvation message to all that come our, come our way or we come in contact. Lord God, and as we do so, we ask that the power of God will rest upon every word that is spoken that comes from our mouth so they can break into the heart of people and open their eyes and give light of salvation unto them that they be saved. We rebuke the devourer. We rebuke the wicked one that blinds the people's heart. We cast him away from their life. And we pray that the word, as we go for this morning, as we go out this morning, as many that will open their mouth to talk about Jesus, may it bring salvation to their life. May it bring deliverance unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.